Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can quickly set up a simple uh, jump through platform such as the one you see here on screen. So without further ado, let's jump right into this video. So as always, you can see that I already have a simple testing set up, and I do already have my platform in the scene, so let's go ahead and delete that for now. And let's start by creating a new scene. So in this case, it's going to be a static body 2D. We can go ahead and rename this to platform like so. And then we want to add a sprite as a child of it. We also want to add a collision shape 2D and a area 2D as a child. Then as a child of the area 2D, we want to add a collision shape 2D. So now we can select our sprite and click and drag a texture into the texture field in the inspector. In this case, I'm just simply adding a square as the texture of it. And then I'm just going to resize it uh, like so. Uh, and I'm basically just eyeballing it. Uh, that should be fine. I can make it a little bit smaller. And now we can define the shape for our collision shapes. So in the inspector, shape empty. And then we're going to use a rectangle shape. So a rectangle shape. And then just resize it to fit your, your sprite, basically, like so. Same thing for the area 2D collision shape. So new rectangle shape. And let's resize it. Now I am going to make it go a little bit above the other collision shape. That way we can actually detect the player. Well, that's pretty much the actual setup for the platform. Now we can just go ahead and save it. I'm just going to save it on the root folder. You can save it wherever you want though. So just go ahead and save it. And yeah, that's the actual setup for it. Now, if you want to be able to jump through the platform from underneath it, it's really simple to do. So basically what you want to do is select the collision shape of your platform. And then in the inspector, you want to set the one way collision to on like so then you know that it's on because it shows this arrow pointing down so we can save and if I actually go to my world and then instance in a platform if I can type there we go let's move it here and if we launch our game right now we should be able to jump through the platform but we still can't jump through it if we're above it so let's actually add that functionality. To do that, we basically want to add a script to our platform. So go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to get a reference to my collision shape and my area 2D. So on ready var collision is equal to collision shape 2D. And then another one on ready var area is equal to area 2D. So we're getting the reference to the collision shape 2D here and the area 2D. Then I want to do func unhandled input event. And this is basically this function here is going to basically check for an input. So in this case, it's going to be if event that is action pressed and then I already defined an action beforehand and the reason I am doing a move down action instead of doing the typical if your player is you know holding down and you press the jump button the player jumps down is uh, because I don't actually have a player state for that so th that's why I just defined a separate action for it and and j just to keep things basically simple so you can use whatever action you want though. And I'm also basically, as you can see here, keeping all the code uh, for this functionality on the platform itself. You could actually also put it on the player. Uh, that's another way you can do it. For this particular implementation, I'm doing all the logic on the platform itself. So if event that is action pressed, move down, then I wanna get the collision well, not the collision. The, the, the way I'm actually going to do this is so you could actually disable the collision here if you want. 
and that's a perfectly viable way of doing it. Uh, the way I'm actually going to do this is a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is select the platform or not the platform, the area 2D. And then I'm going to set the monitoring in the inspector to off as well as monitorable because we don't want anything to actually uh, detect this area 2D. And then for the collision, we want it to not be on any layer. And then we only want it to mess for the player. So only the player uh, can be detected by this area 2D. Now, the reason we did monitoring to off, if we hover over monitoring, basically what this does is if it's set to true, the area detects bodies or areas entering and exiting it. The reason I'm setting it to false is because the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to turn on the monitoring and then I'm going to use the body enter signal to disable the collision. So let me actually do uh, do that here in code. So area dot set deferred and we want to use set deferred because otherwise it might cause some issues with our game. Uh, so yeah, so set deferred and then the property name. So monitoring is the property name we want to set and then we want to set it to true when we press the move down button. Then with our area 2D still selected, we can go over to node, body, entered, and connect it to our platform. And then we also want to make sure that we also connect a body exited signal to our platform. So like I said, when our body enters our area 2D, we want to then disable the collision. So collision that set deferred same thing property as a string so in this case the disabled property and then it's set to true so we're disabling the collision with this line of code here if we didn't uh, set the monitoring to true here then it wouldn't be able to detect if our player entered the collision or the area 2d so that's essentially how it works so basically when we set by setting the monitoring to true when we press down it will detect that the player is inside the area 2d and then disable the collision so that's basically the logic behind this like i said you could directly disable the collision here uh, when you press down if you want the reason i'm doing it this way is because i actually prefer the feel uh, for the game doing it this way because if we disable the collision directly when we press down if we jump up and then we press the action move down we just automatically go through the platform but by doing it this way there's one frame where our player still collides with the platform so i kind of prefer that feel but it's pretty much up to you uh, you could you know disable it here if you want directly when we press the the button and if you want to do it uh, this directly here, then you can forget about using this line and making sure that the area 2D is actually set to monitor train here so that I can actually detect areas and bodies exiting by default. But yeah, we're just going to stick to this way. So we disable the collision and then we want to do the exact same thing. So let's just copy this line of code and then instead of setting it to true, for disabled we want to set it to false so here we're basically enabling the collision again and then we also want to copy this line of code here and move it down and we want to set the monitoring back to false so that it doesn't detect uh, a body until we press the the button again basically so if we actually try this out, it should actually already work. So if I run the game, so I can jump through. And then if I press the button, as you can see, we can jump through it. And as I mentioned also, there, as, there is that one frame. So if I jump up and hold down, there is that one frame where our player still collides with the platform. Oh, well, for some reason, it's actually not doing that right now. Oh, there we go. So yeah, most of the time there is that one frame where it does it. Oh, that's because our area is a little bit too high. Uh, so <laughs> it's because of this here, 
we set the area to D and it's a little bit too high so if we move this down like so where it's just barely above the other collision shape and if we test it so same thing and now there we go we have that one frame where our player is actually colliding with it yep as you can see and like I said if you disabled the collision directly when you press the button then you would just face through the through the platform as you're holding down when you're you know falling but yeah that's pretty much it so uh, for this implementation now like I said there are many ways you can actually do this uh, another way you could actually do it and let me actually do that really quick here and show you is to actually handle some of the logic on the player itself so if I go to my player scene here the way you would do that is you can have a Raycast 2D pointing down, making sure that you enable it in the inspector. And then in the actual player script, you can basically get a reference to that Raycast, such as uh, what I'm doing here. And then you can do if Raycast is colliding, so we're checking if the Raycast is colliding. Then we have a var collision is equal to the Raycast.get collider, so we're setting it equal to whatever our Raycast is colliding with. And then we're checking if the collision has the method disabled, which in this case we haven't added, but basically you would have a disabled function on your platform if you wanna disable the collision on the platform, or you could actually disable the collision on the player itself. Uh, that's another way you can do it. But then uh, we're checking if we have this method on the platform, and if we press the move down button, and if this is true, then we call the collision.disabled method on the thing we're colliding with. So in this case, it would be our platform. So we want to do func disable, I believe it's what we called it. And then since we're doing this uh, using the monitoring, uh, basically we want to just remove the, this from here and move it into the disable function. And then we can get rid of this other function since we don't need it anymore. So we can come and edit out for now. Then if I actually test this out. And run it. It should actually work the same way. So there we go. It's working the exact same way. So yeah, that's basically another way you can do this sort of functionality for your games. Like I mentioned, there's many ways you can do it. Um, it's pretty much up to you which way you want to actually uh, implement it in your game. Now, like I briefly also mentioned, you could also handle the logic uh, on the player itself and instead disable the collision on the player instead of the platform. That's another way. But yeah. With all that said, hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you did, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful day.